Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Myungjae Choi from Yonsei University in South Korea. Uh, today, my talk uh, is the, about aerosol observations from the Himawari, Kosi, and Jam satellites over East Asia. First part is the introdu introduction to Himawari 8, Kosi, and Jams. Uh, today talk will cover the three geostationary satellites for air source and air quality over East Asia. Left one is the Himawari 8 full disk true color image. So Himawari means a sunflower in Japanese. The second one is the Gosi image as right one is the gems uh, nitro dioxide image, which will be launched in, launched in next year. Uh, this chart shows the spatial and temporal resolution of air quality satellites. The spatial re resolution is different according to the target product. The red triangle represents uh, the trace gases sensor, such as ozone and nitrogen dioxide. The green squares represent the greenhouse gases sensors such as carbon dioxide and methane. Generally, these gases measurement sensors uh, have coarse spatial resolution as a few kilometers. Uh, the last one, the yellow circles represent the aerosol sensors and they have higher spatial resolution less than a kilometer. We can see that most low Earth orbit LEO sensors have a day to week temporal resolution, but geostationary orbit sensors have higher temporal resolution from a few minutes to, a, to a one hour. In this talk, I will only cover aerosols using GOSI, AHI, Himawari, and GEMS for air quality studies. Uh, the full name of GOSI is the Geostationary Ocean Color Imager. It was launched in 2010 and is still working well and will be ended in 2020. Its primary objective is the monitoring of ocean colors to understand ocean biology, such as the chlorophyll concentration and dissolved organic ma uh, materials. There have been many ocean color sensors, such as CGCS, CWIPS, MARIS, MODIS, and LISENT OSEI. All of these ocean color sensors are uh, real sensors. So GOSI is the, uh, currently uh, uh, only one ocean color sensor in geostation orbit. GOSI has eight channels. Uh, six visible wavelength channels from 412 to 680 nanometer, and two near infrared channels as 745 and 865 nanometer, like uh, light under panels. Its temporal resolution is one hour, from nine half to half to. Uh, 14, uh, 1630 local time. It covers East Asia area as light figures, including Eastern China, Korea, and Japan. And its spatial resolution is 500 meter by 500 meter, which is very high resolution despite of geostationary satellite. The second one is uh, AHI. Its full name is an advanced Himawari imager. The two satellites contain these sensors, Himawari 8 and Himawari 9, which is launched in 2014 and 2016, respectively. The primary objective of Himawari 8, uh, Himawari 9 AHI sensors uh, is the fastest, uh, fast scanning and reporting of 
meteorological conditions over East Asia, such as typhoons or clouds. There were previous meteorological geostationary sensors over East Asia, such as MTSEP by Japan, MI by Korea, or Fengyun number two series by China. But those uh, uh, had only one broad visible channel, so it is not suitable for high quality aerosol retrievers. In these days, other similar next generation meteorological satellite sensors are ready or already uh, launched, like ABI operated by US, AMI will be launch, uh, launched in next year by Korea, or Feng Yun 4A series operated by China. The temporal resolutions are different according to the measurement mode. The first, um, the focus mode over Japan area here uh, have, has every 2.5 minutes measurement. The full disk mode covering East Asia and Oceania has every 10 minutes measurement. So for the full disk measurement, uh, we can get totally 144 times per day. AHCI has 16 channels, three visible channels like 0 0.47, 0 0.51, and 0.64 micrometer. Uh, these three channels are related to aerosol cloud and so more, but we can use this channel's information for aerosol retrievers. And it also has one near infrared channel and IR channel like 0.86 micrometer and two shortwave IR channels like 1.6 and 2.3 micrometer. These channels uh, can be used to get some surface reflectance information for air retrievers. And you also have 10 infrared channels from 3.9 to 13.3 micrometer. Uh, these infrared channels uh, are very useful to detect cloud information. The spatial resolution is different according to the channels from 500 meter invisible and 1 kilometer invisible and 2 kilometer in infrared. Our third one is the GEMS. Its full name is the Geostationary Environmental Monitoring Spectrometer on board GeoComSat 2B satellite. It will be launched in next year, and the lifespan is approximately 10 years. The primary objective is for air quality measurement, including aerosols and trace gases, like uh, ozone or nitrogen dioxide. Other similar previous current or planned sensors are SBUV, GOM, GOM2, Skiamaki, OMI, OMPS, TROPOMI, and all these sensors were and are on lower orbit also. So GEMS is the world's first geostationary air quality sensors for trace gases retrieval over East Asia in next year. But there are also another, uh, other geostationary air quality satellite uh, like TEMPOR over East Asia, uh, TEMPOR over USA and Sentinel-4 over the Europe. So this international constellation for observing air quality will be planned now. GEMS is also have a one hour temporal resolution during a daytime. So totally eight times per day from nine to 16 as local time. And we can see uh, hourly uh, NO2 uh, retrieval result over East Asia, like here. It has uh, some coarse spatial resolution, like uh, point, uh, 3.5 or 6 by, uh, by 8 kilometer at, at source for aerosols and trace cases, uh, respectively. 
and it also covered a broad area of East Asia. The latitude is from 5 south to 45 north, and longitude from 75 to 145 east. The spectral range and resolution is here, the 300 meter, uh, nanometer to 500 nanometer with 0.6 nanometer uh, spectral resolution. It, it, it is very high resolution to detect trace gases absorption band like under a uh, light under figure figures. Um, compared to the aerosol, the trace gases are uh, have a high frequency absorption band like ozone black line, NO2 like red line, or form aldehyde like a green line, or glyoxal like blue line. To detect this uh, high frequency absorption band, uh, we need a very high spe uh, spectral resolution uh, measurement. So GEMS is focused on that measurement. The second part is the aerosol optical properties and retriever algorithm. This is the principles of aerosol remote sensing. Uh, we can see the sunlight is here and it is starts from the sun to earth and is it also passed through the atmosphere and reflectant uh, reflect from the earth and we can detect this uh, reflected uh, sunlight signals from the satellite here. The signals can be scattered from the atmosphere or Earth's uh, surface, and we can we should distinguish these uh, signals. The Rayleigh scattering shows symmetry distribution. Bef uh, between forward and backward scattering. So this scattering characteristics is very well known. So we can get the Rayleigh scattering information from the calculation. But aerosols shows the misscattering characteristics. Misscattering uh, is the very uh, high forward, forward scattering compared to the Rayleigh scattering. So this Rayleigh and air source uh, have a different characteristics. So our goal to get the air source information is to, to distinguish this air source information only from the totally added uh, signal in the sensor uh, in the satellite. Here's the definition of air source optical properties. First. Um, first one is the aerosol optical depth. Uh, aerosol optical depth, or AUD, is the degree of uh, degree to which aerosols prevent the transmission of light by absorption or scattering of light. Uh, we can think easily like uh, low AUD means the very clear condition in atmosphere, and high AUD case in very uh, thick of aerosols in the atmosphere. Uh, this AUD value is a uh, total column integrated value from surface to top of atmosphere. So it is some different with the ground measure PM2.5 concentration due to the definition. If you want to get the PM2.5 or PM10 from the satellite, we should consider this definition uh, difference according to the altitude. Second one is the Armstrong exponent. The Armstrong exponent is the spectral dependence of AUD, and it is related to the particle size. Uh, the, the high Armstrong exponent, about two, means very small particle like smoke air source, and low Armstrong exponent close to zero, zero is the coarse particle like dust. Uh, next uh, definition is the fine mode fraction FMF. This fine mode fraction is uh, is based on the aerosol volume size distribution. Generally, uh, aerosol have the bimodal shape, like fine mode particle and coarse mode particle. 
and the phi mode fraction means the total uh, phi mode AOD by total AOD. So its range is zero to one. And uh, if there are coarse particle is dominant in atmosphere, uh, that that atmosphere should uh, should have the low phi mode fraction, and inverse vice versa. So phi mode when phi particle is dominant, then it should pre uh, it has the high phi mode fraction condition. The last one is the single scattering albedo. The single scattering albedo is the effectiveness of scattering related to extinction. So if light uh, is scared, uh, if light meet the uh, SO particle, then the light should uh, scatter or absorb. So that absorption coefficient plus scattering coefficient means the extinction. So single scattering albedo is defined the scattering coefficient by extinction coefficient. Uh, we can see this right figure. The absorbing particle shows low single scattering albedo like black carbon. It, it contains more light. So there, if there are so many absorbing particles there, uh, the atmosphere is uh, changed to warming, warming atmosphere. Compared to the low single scattering albedo condition, uh, in high single uh, in high SSA condition, particle uh, is um, make some more scattered to the atmosphere uh, to the top of atmosphere. So it means that there are less energy in atmosphere, so it makes the atmosphere as cooler. Please note that there are no units for AUD on string exponent, phi mode fraction, and single scattering albedo. Uh, this is the top of atmosphere reflectance component. Uh, this is based on the Honinger et al. in AMT paper in 2011. And the x axis is the wavelength from 400 to 900 nanometer and y-axis is the refractance. And the black line is the top of atmosphere refractance, uh, which can be measured at the satellite. In the satellite measurement, we can see this totally integrated refractance like a black line. But in real atmosphere, there are some combination of surface refractance and Rayleigh refractance and also refractance. First of all, this uh, blue line means the Rayleigh scattering. The Rayleigh scattering changed um, here. But as we mentioned before, as I mentioned before, the Rayleigh scattering can be calculated very easily because we already know the characteristics of this Rayleigh scattering. But the difficult one is the green line, the surface reflectance. Surface reflectance can be changed according to the surface type like desert or ocean or vegetation area. So if we get a more, a more accurate aerosol signal, we should know the surface reflectance signal very well. If we know this, surface signal and daily signal from the top of atmosphere, then we can calculate it aerosol signal only like a uh, red line as TOA reflectance minus surface reflectance minus daily scattering reflectance equal aerosol reflectance. So aerosol retriever algorithm uh, has this concept. Uh, this slide is the uh, same with the previous Pawan's presentation. This shows the simpli uh, simplified version of the remote sensing processes and more focus on the air source. Uh, it starts from the satellite measured spectral radiance and it also requires the a priori information and radiative transfer theory. And it also requires the retrieval algorithm, including cloud masking, surface signal determination. And using all of this information, our final goal is to 
to get aerosolical properties like aerosolical depth, AUD, also exponents like uh, particle size information, and as I say, like uh, solubility information from aerosols. If we get this information from the satellite, we can use this satellite information to the real air quality applications. Hereafter, I'm going to explain each step for aerosol retriever briefly. The aerosol retriever algorithm is applied to, to cloud-free and snow-free pixels over land and cloud-free and ice-free over ocean pixels. General characteristics of cloud compared to aerosols are different for visible and infrared wavelength channels. The clouds are spatially in homogeneous, inhomogeneous and bright in visible wavelengths and low brightness temperature due to high altitude. So we can use this information to detect the cloud and mask out from the GOSI, GEMS, and AHI. Some specific uh, channels are very sensitive to ice crystal or water droplet. So we also saw this information from the AHI because AHI has very um, uh, has many IR channels compared to GOSI or GEMS. The snow or ice surface are too bright in visible wavelengths, so there are less aerosol there are less aerosol sensitivity. Thus, most sensors cannot retrieve aerosol information over there. Meanwhile, the UV wavelengths still have some sensitivity for aerosols over desert, so gems can get aerosol over desert compared to Gosi or Himawari. The right figure shows some example of the aerosol retriever. We can see bright surface and cloud pixels doesn't have any AUD pixels, but other pixels are retrieved as uh, AUD from 0 to 2, uh, 0 to 2 like uh, rainbow colors. First one was the cloud masking, and second part is the approximation of land surface reflectance. The first concept is the dark target concept based on the Kaufman et al. 1997 and Lemmer et al. 2005. The basic assumption is that over the dark surface, such as vegetation, the visible wavelength surface reflectance has a linear relationship with short wave IR channels. Because short wave IR channels like 2.1 micrometer have low sensitivity to air source, we, uh, so we can get surface information well compared to uh, surface uh, information better compared to the visible wavelength. This method can be applied at each measurement using measured visible and short wave IR radians. So, and also this method consider different relationship according to the surface type like NDVI vegetation index. Currently, uh, this uh, dark target concept is applied to the MODIS dark target algorithm and VS aerosol algorithm now. And it also can be applied to AHI sensor because the AHI sensor have short bar channels compared to GOSI and GEMS. The second concept is the minimum reflectance technique from composite database. This is the pre-calculation concept. We can think this is the climatological database. It's seen has cloud or air source, so it is hard to get surface reflectance directly. But if we combine each scene during a month and composite that data as one data, then we can get clear pixels to get surface signals. This method uh, was and is applied to CWIPS and MODIS Deep Blue Air Retriever algorithm and Tom's and Omi aerosol retriever algorithm, which is using the UV characteristics. So this 
method uh, can be applied to GOC, GEMS, and AHI all of sensors. Uh, this, is, this is one example of the land surface reflectance using the minimum reflectiv reflectivity technique. Uh, we can see the air source and cloud signals at each scene, but we combine this uh, each scene data for one month and same hourly scenes after the Rayleigh corrected and Rayleigh scattering is corrected then we can find uh, some dark scene and consider it for surface reflectance like uh, uh, white figures. We can see most aerosols and cloud, clouds are masked and get, we do the, we, we, got, we get the real surface signal from the composite database. But we also see the remaining grass, uh, pixels like snow here. So, so uh, this part is for the aerosol optical properties. In real atmosphere, aerosols ha have very variable shapes and properties like left figures. Uh, left figures show some Sahara dust in US, smoldering Phase smoke from Amazon, smoke cluster from Amazon here, and China pollution here. To calculate this, these optical properties using computer, computer, computer uh, aerosols should be considered more easily. Like right part observing or scattering in terms of as single scattering albedo and coarse or fine, the, um, it, it represents the aerosol size and the shape of aerosols like spherical or non-spherical. To retrieve aerosols from satellite, these uh, simplified assumptions are required. Uh, this is the last part of the uh, aerosol retrieval algorithm. As I showed um, before um, previous slide, um, we should uh, simplify aerosol properties like size or a substituty or particle shape. But we also uh, we, we also should consider the part uh, the particle distribution like uh, aerosol is where uh, where aerosol is located, upper or bottom layer of the atmosphere. So we then we can consider various uh, available atmospheric conditions such as uh, particle size distribution, reflective index, and on, and also so the possible type of atmospheric reflectance or radiance can be calculated using the radiative transfer model. Like here, uh, exact name is the six S V Livratron or Vlight, or this is the uh, radiative radiative transfer. Uh, calculation uh, program. Then we can get the calculated TOA reflectance using RTM here. And we also have the observed uh, TOA reflectance, type of atmosphere reflectance from the satellite measurement. Then we can compare with uh, two type of atmosphere reflectance. The final step is the finding best condition, which make least difference between them. Then we can get else optical properties such as AOD. Then from now on, I will show some retrieval lizard from the geostation satellite GOSI, AHI, and GEMS, and those products are based on our group's Yonsei University, University Aerosol Retrieval Algorithm. Using the visible channels, it has the very high sensitivity for particle size. So the product is aerosol curve depth and size information like fine mode fraction and Ohm's exponent from GOSI and AHI. 
uh, those two products uh, have the same spatial resolution, like six by six kilometer spatial resolution. And GoSee has the one hour temporal resolution and AHI has the 10 minute temporal resolution. The bottom is the gems. Uh, gems measure the UV wavelengths. So UV wavelengths has very high sensitivity for air absorption. So gems aerosol product will provide the air optical depth and single section albedo or UV aerosol index or uh, and or aerosol layer height. It has uh, uh, 3.5 kilometer by 8 kilometer spatial resolution over the Seoul area. And it also has one hour temporal resolution. This is one example of the GoCS retriever lizard. This is the very heavy dust case in April 27th in 2012. Uh, in the left uh, upper figure, we can see very uh, thick yellow dust is transported from the inland of China to Korean Peninsula. Uh, we can see this aerosol plume uh, as a yellow color in RGB image. Uh, after the aerosol retriever algorithm processes, we can get very high AUD above the two from GOSI and MI and MODIS. MI is the previous our meteorological sensor uh, having one visible channel, but it has the very high frequency of the temporal resolution, like 15 minutes interval. So we can more smooth change of air uh, transportation from MI and one hour temporal resolution from the GOC. But MODIS have the two times per day from the aqua and terra measurement, so there's only two scenes during a day. This aerosol plume shows very low fine mode fraction, like about, about 0.3. It means that coarse particle is dominant, and we can see this uh, low fine mode fraction, like a blue color here. And according to the aerosol type classification based on fine fraction and single spectrum albedo, uh, we can see the aerosol particles are classified like dust over here area. Uh, this is uh, other case, smoke case in May 19th in 2016, measured from the AHI Himawari Aerosol, uh, Himawari uh, sensors. The main focus is over here, uh, right upper area. Here, you can see very high, uh, sorry. Um, white color aerosol plume is transported from the Russia to the Hokkaido in Japan area. Uh, over here, we can see 10 minute temporal resolution image from AHI. It's like an animation or movie. Because uh, we assumed uh, two different surface reflectance techniques, you know, AHI has the two products, uh, merged version composite method and dark target method, and both methods uh, Leisure shows a similar AUD about the one at the center of the plume. And MODIS, Terra, and Aqua also have to detect this plume, but there, due to the sunglint issue, there are so many no retriever pixels around the Hokkaido area. And Beers also detect this plume, but also has some no retriever area due to the sunglint. Sunglint means that too bright uh, ocean surface due to the geometry between Earth, Sun, and satellite. Most sunglint area of the geostationary satellite uh, is located uh, near the equator, so we can see more continuous image uh, aerosol plume over the East Asia from China to Japan. And in this plume, uh, in this case, the plume also uh, shows very high fine reflection compared to the previous case. So 
It means that the smoke uh, plume is very well classified in this algorithm. The last one is the dust case in Mars. Uh, sorry, one, uh, sorry, first in 2007 from the James Earth Retriever algorithm. Uh, actually, uh, currently we don't have the real James uh, measured data, so we use the OMI level 1B data to simulate. And, uh, to check our retrieval algorithm for gems. So we can see this result uh, from the OMI, but we will expect the similar result from the gems. And this, this dust case, we can see very heavy dust plume is transported from the inland of China, and yellow color in RGB image, and the aerosol type classification it also detected uh, as a dust particle very rare, like a blue color in aerosol type map. The retrieved aerosol particle depth at 443 nanometer shows the up to the three. It's very thick aerosol plume, and it also shows some single sector albedo like 0.88 to 0.94. It means they very absorbed as uh, absorbed. Uh, properties uh, like a dust. The main advantage of GEMS is that it can calculate the aerosol effective height using the UV sensitivity for aerosol loading height. The right under figure we can see uh, here. The green color and red circles are from the obtained from the LiDAR measurement Calio. And Calio can uh, uh, use the laser information to get the aerosol height information. So in generally, we use this Calio height as a reference. And for the red color is the GEMS aerosol retrieval lizard and GEMS uh, also detect this aerosol loading height very well. This aerosol loading height is very important to distinguish the relationship between total AOD from bottom to top of atmosphere and the surface measured PN2.5. Uh, this is some result of the validation of GOSI, AHI, and GEMS, the aerosol optical depths using Aeronet measurement. The Aeronet is the ground-based remote sensing network operated by NASA, and it has very high accuracy, about 0 0.01 for AUD. So it's uh, generally a uh, reference data to evaluate the satellite data. For GOSI, AHI, and GEMS, uh, the AOD shows very high correlation be, uh, uh, with the uh, Aeronet AOD. The correlate, uh, linear correlation coefficient is about 0.8 to 0.9. Um, but there are still some assumptions and limitation of the S retriever algorithm. The S retriever from limited satellite measurement is an ear post problem. Uh, actually, real atmospheric status is a combination of unknown, unknown variables, but satellite measures provide limited information. It means that amount of unknown information is greater than degree of freedom of satellite measurement. Thus, the a priori information and accurate radiative transfer theory and model are required to retrieve high quality Earth information from satellites. To do this work, we require a very well assumed Earth particle distribution or representative Earth types or particle shape. Or we also require very well known uh, surface refractance.
or other atmospheric condition status also like gas profiles or temperature profiles also. The next part is the practical uses of geostationary aerosol data sets and their application to air quality studies. Maybe most uh, attendees want to know this practical use using geostationary satellite product. So I will show some um, results based on our research studies. <coughs> to utilize your aerosol data practically, the accuracy should be validated using ground-based measurement. In this study, the GOSI AOD was validated using AeroNet ground-based remote sensing data and compared with other LEO sensors, AOD products such as BEERS and MODIS. The offer figures is the AOD versus satellite product, each satellite product, and second uh, bottom figure panels are the uh, AOD errors according to the AeroNet AUD range. During 2012 to 2013 over East Asia, uh, GOSI AOD shows uh, less bias and matched better with AeroNet compared to other products like VIRS or MODIS. You can see the bias is from GOSI is about 0 0.02, 0 0.02 or 0 0.05 compared to other higher bias here. So also it also shows a high frequency of uh, within the expected error range, like 66% compared to other products. So we can start to use GOSI AOD data for air quality studies with the advantage of high temporal resolution and high accuracy also. Uh, Strength of geostation or orbital measurement, the detection of highly variable aerosol transportation. Aerosol can be very highly variable, especially heavy aerosol transportation cases. Cases. This is the case of May 16, uh, 2016. The smoke aerosol plume was transported from Russia to northern Japan, Hokkaido area. In the first day, first day, the left figure, the AUD was about 0.2. For second day, the AUD was changed rapidly from 0, uh, 0.2 to 1.5. Left change during a day. The black dot line is the ground-based measurement of AeroNet, and we can think this AeroNet as the reference data. For lower Soviet measurement, uh, like blue or green or magenta color, modis dark target blue, beers or miser, it only detects once or twice times per day. So it is very hard to detect this rapid change of atmospheric conditions using the lower survey data. But AHI and GOSI, the yellow and red that uh, follows and detect very well of this left change during a day. And at the image, the upper one is the GOSI and the bottom one is the AHI. One hour and 10 minute temporal resolution differently. And we can see very heavy aerosol plume is transported to the Hokkaido area. And we can more smooth image from the AHI. This plume are changed continuously but still locate, located over Hokkaido area up to four days. After the plume was passing, AOD decreased to 0.5 and less at the, fi uh, the final last days. Main advantage of geostationary satellite is to detect highly variable air quality state status continuously. During the 2012 spring, there was uh, several heavy aerosol events, such as dust cases in the first period, of the period uh, anthropogenic uh, emission, and smoke cases as follows. 
In our figure, original chemical transport model leads a red line. And we can see and this red line here and the ground-based uh, PM10 PM measurement is the blue line. We can see big gap between observed blue line and no assimilated trans uh, chemical transport model region like a red line, big gap between them. And GOSIC can provide hourly AUD images, so it can be assimilated with chemical transport model multiple times during a daytime. Uh, assimilation means that the uh, integration of chemical transport model and satellite measurement together. In this study, uh, we did a three hour interval assimilation for the GOSI and also uh, together with the MODIS uh, two times per day. When the chemical transport model are assimilated with the MODIS and GOSI, the, uh, the result shows improved matches with ground observation like, uh, like a black line. The assimilation result is a black line. We can see the change from red to black line is cl more close to the blue line. And compared to the MODIS only data assimilation, GOSI plus MODIS result uh, shows less bias over all sides like a green colors. It means that multiple times uh, assimilation is very useful to improve the chemical transport model accuracy. This is another collaboration work with the House University. Uh, GoCAUD is used to adjust geoscan air quality model lizard. Before the adjustment, the slope of linear regression line between model and ground-based measurement was about 0.5. But after the adjustment, the slope is changed to the 0 0.9, like a light figure. This study generated PM2.5 distribution with very high accuracy over Eastern China and each season. We can see the uh, low PM 2.5 during the spring and autumn season and spring, uh, summer and autumn season and very high PM 2.5 during the winter season, December to February. Uh, this is uh, another uh, study to the assimilation between GOSI and chemical transport model. Uh, CMAC AUD is, is, uh, can also generate AUD and PM2.5, PM10 distribution like a left figure. And GOSI can measure atmospheric conditions like here, sec second column. And the assimilation between them is the assimilation result is the right uh, columns, or just columns in the left figures. Um, there are so many techniques to integrate to, integrate to uh, chemical transport model and satellite measurements. The first one method is uh, called the optimal interpolation method, and second one was the gap filling method to fill the empty data for model time and mass, uh, model time and cloud mask area, there is a the typo, sorry. Uh, we can get the hourly GOSI AUD product over each hour and cloud-free area, but model generated no cloud area AUD or uh, cloud area AUD also. So to combine them, uh, this gap filling method make a continuous AOD plume based on the statistical approaches. So this several uh, in integration development is used to the real uh, air quality forecasting and assimilation studies in Korea. Uh, not only for the air quality studies, uh, this 
geostationary satellite can provide very high spatial uh, high spatial resolution uh, aerosol distribution over East Asia due to the um, many observation samples during a daytime and fixed observation area. It means that the uh, same pixels are measured continuously from the geostationary satellite measurement. Uh, this uh, mostly AOD distribution is generated by uh, using the C AOD, and this spatial distribution is very well matched with MODIS and VR's lizard, recent lizard here. But this MODIS and VR's provide uh, AOD monthly product as a very coarse spatial resolution, like one by one uh, degree of longitude, uh, latitude and longitude box. However, of course, it can provide climatological value as high spatial high spatial resolution, like original six by six kilometer level two resolution also. And we can see the general change of the AOD distribution. Uh, according to the season and area. Uh, AOD can uh, show the peak at the May and June time and low in the uh, winter time, but it is very different uh, shape, a uh, different uh, characteristics uh, with the PM2.5, so we should know about it. The daily mean AODNET AOD uh, can be calculated from the all point. All point means that uh, several minute uh, temporal resolution measurement and daily mean AOD uh, from GOSI is from uh, eight times measurement during a day, but only one or two times in MODIS is available. It means that more samples in GOSI can provide reasonable, uh, reasonable daily and monthly AOD and this can be less affected by sampling issues for climatological analysis of aerosols. Uh, this uh, time series is a monthly uh, AUD time series using the Aeronet, MODIS, and GOSI over Beijing, uh, Yonsei University over Seoul, Osaka in Japan, and Guangzhou in Seoul and Korea. Uh, we can see the linear regression coefficient R or RMSE error. Uh, uh, shows very uh, high accuracy for the daily uh, monthly AOD time series in GOC compared to the dark target and deep loop MODIS product. Due to the multiple times measurement uh, advantage, uh, this uh, geostationary satellite uh, is hard to use as a primary satellite data to support uh, air quality field campaign. This is um, main information of the Coros AQ campaign over Korean Peninsula and May to June in 2016. And during this campaign, we also we also provide GOSI and Himari aerosol product from our university, and they are also MODIS, OMI, or other lower service satellite product also. This satellite product can provide broad spatial coverage for key atmospheric components like aerosols, ozone, or precursors. And during this campaign, there are three uh, aircraft measurements like uh, NASA DCA, Langley King Air, or Hansa King Air. This uh, airborne uh, measurement of can measure, uh, airborne measurement uh, can provide the real uh, sample data of atmosphere. And simultaneously, there are several Air quality models are learned, and this satellite data are used as a reference data to evaluate the several air quality models. This is the one example of during the cross campaign. The bottom figure in left figure, uh, bottom uh, distribution of left figure is the GOSI AOD from 0 0.0 to 1.5. And Red color means the very high AOD plume is transported from the China to Korea. And this hourly GOC AOD can be matched with uh, several times with the, during the air quality campaign during a day. 
And the vertical uh, cotton plot is from the AHS, A, uh, HSRL urban LIDAR measurement. Uh, LIDAR can provide a vertical di distribution of aerosol profiles. So combining these two products can, uh, we, uh, when we combine this uh, horizontally spatial distribution of aerosols from GOC and particular properties from the AS uh, LIDAR, then we can get the 3D aerosol distributions over the East, uh, over the Yellow Sea in this campaign. And we can see this aerosol plume is transported from the China uh, based on the backward trajectory modeling. So this uh, combining geostationary satellite data is very useful to understand the real uh, status of the atmosphere during a day. The last part is the additionally available air quality data sets from geostationary satellites over East Asia in the near future. Uh, this is the main uh, information for the GeoComset 2A and 2B, uh, which is the next generation of geostation satellite operated by Korea. Uh, GeoComset 2A will have the AMI, the meteorological sensor. It's very similar like uh, ABI in the previous presentation. So it will provide a full disk image as a 10 minute temporal resolution like Himawari or Feng Yun forces or ABI over the USA. We also, uh, the Korean uh, space agency also will have the, these sensors. So it will provide aerosol and uh, optical depth and size information. And the GeoComset 2B will have the gems as I shown before and GOSI 2. So GOC2 is the uh, next generation of GOC. Uh, because um, GOC1 will be end in two years later, so this GOC2 will uh, have a continuous lower as followed to GOC1. So different wavelengths, different characteristics of the temporal resolution and spectral resolution provide different aerosol optical properties. So, uh, and this is the, not for the aerosols. This is the GEMS aerosols and trace gases and application product. Uh, as I explained in the introduction, GEMS will provide column amount of atmospheric aerosols and trace gases also. The, the trace gases um, means that uh, total ozone or ozone profiles, photon aldehyde and glyoxal, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and cloud information over here, and also properties like AUD, SSA, or aerosol loading height. Synergy of hourly measurements of aerosols and trace gases from GEMS will be key to understanding highly varying air quality status comprehensively. Uh, this is the real last part of my presentation. How to access those data set? First of all, uh, the AHI Himawari uh, data can be uh, uh, available from the JAXA official homepage. The JAXA provide AHI data and images through this homepage. Uh, FTP service is available for level 1B radiance and level 2 aerosol data. And right figure is the one example of the JAXA homepage. Uh, uh, next, uh, this is a uh, GOSI and AHI aerosol data uh, generated by our Yonsei University. The specific period uh, during the course AQ campaign, May to June, 2016 uh, is avail uh, fairly available at uh, below link, two links here, two links here. Then we can get, uh, you can check this uh, folders in the FTP homepage about AHI cost and GOSI. The GOSI uh, 
data is start from the March uh, 2011 to the current, and AHI is ready for the 2016 and March to this year and now. This GOSI and AHI Yonsei Azure data and images are also available through the FTP server operated by uh, our group, Professor Jun Kim's group. To get this data, uh, please contact to our group, Professor Jun Kim or other guys in here. We, I, I wrote down the email address here. Also, after the launch of GeoComset 2B, GEMS and GOSI2 also products are also uh, will be also available through the Professor Jun Kim's lab. So please uh, please contact to this data in the near future. For the just checking about the animation image, not for the after data exactly. So then you can download this daily GOSI and AHI AUD animation figures in, uh, at this Google Drive link uh, operated by our lab. And then you can get this 10-minute uh, tem uh, temporal resolution of AHI image over the RGB image. So you can see the cloud condition and also condition together, and also the one-hour temporal product a temporal resolution product of the GOSI. And GOSI and AHI, their ASR data format is HDF4. So the Panoply um, program by NASA is a very useful tool to plot images. So please keep this program also. Mm, other useful home pages. The uh, GOSI official homepage is, is here by COSC Kiosk. So you can see the GOSI level 1B data and other general information. You can get uh, that information from this homepage. And the second one is the GEMS Science Team homepage operated by our group. And you can see more details uh, and, uh, can be found with presentation files and lectures. Uh, we also have the uh, every year Gen Science team meeting, and all of the materials are uploaded already, so you can check it. And our group homepage is here, so we are welcome collaboration opportunities. And last one is the reference for our GOSI AHI MI and GEMS as retriever algorithm and its application. So please uh, find these references uh, papers if you have some interest. Thank you for your attention. OK, now we are going to take question answers uh, for the session. Um, I will be taking question answer on behalf of Dr. Choi. He will not be able to join uh, or for this live session as he is in South Korea. So I will be answering some of the question on his behalf. Okay, great. So uh, I have some question in front of me. Uh, I hope you can see my screen and read it here. So the first question is, are there any similar air quality satellite covering Africa or plans to have them? Uh, there is the satellite or sensor called Surveyor, uh, which is on board on one of the uh, meteorite, uh, meteorite satellite uh, by European Space Agency, which provides data over Africa. Although it is uh, an old GOES imager type sensor and it does not have that many spectral band, so it's not as advanced as GOES or, or Himawari sensors. Uh, in next few years, ESA will be launching a sensor called FCI, which will have similar capabilities as GOES are. 
Next question, how useful air quality is sensor in geothermal environment, which is indicated by among other factors like high CO2, H2S or red on gas? Can these gas concentration anomalies can be detected? Uh, so we can do uh, CO2 from satellite. There are a number of uh, sensors actually up in the space, uh, which can actually uh, make measurement of CO2. Uh, but I'm not aware of any other data or methods which can do the other gases like red on. Uh, hopefully in future, once we have this more hyperspectral instrument, um, flown in geostationary orbit like Tempo or GEMS we talked about uh, that they, will, they might open some opportunities to look other gases. Another question is AOD calculated with MODIS image has the same inappropriate pixel masking like GOSI, GEMS or AHI. Uh, I am not sure what uh, the question is here, I'm not sure what is the inappropriate pixel masking. Um, so if you can rephrase your question or if you can clarify, then I will be able to answer it. What method do you recommend to use to adjust the MODIS data for PM 2.5 for Guatemala City because there is no Aeronet platform? Uh, for converting aerosol optical depth into PM 2.5 uh, is a uh, we have done number of webinar series on it and I would strongly recommend to go over some of those series. Uh, there are a number of ways in which uh, one can convert AOD to PM 2.5, both statistical modeling and physical modeling. Uh, and depending on uh, purpose of the calculations and how frequently you want um, and uh, if there are any ground data available or not, uh, you can adopt different methods. So I strongly recommend look at the webinar series, which has been uh, linked here. Uh, same thing for question number five. Uh, please go check our webinar series on advanced AUDPM 2.4 in conversion. Question number six, is there any available satellite data for North African Sahara, which satellite can use for air quality studies over Middle East? Uh, I already talked about the North uh, Africa or Saharan region. Uh, there is uh, no similar geostation satellite over that region yet, but there are polar orbiting satellite which provides uh, data all over the world like MODIS, MIS, Zervius. Uh, there is uh, Indian satellite uh, which does cover some part of Africa and Middle East, uh, including India, and we'll cover those uh, in week four presentation. Question number seven, do you think that RGB channels or products is more useful to determine or quantify dust or aerosols? Uh, it depends. Um, on what kind of, if you're only looking for dust, then you will uh, require channels which can actually differentiate dust from different uh, uh, backgrounds, uh, aerosol sources. So for example, over Sahara, where surface is very bright, uh, looking only RGB channel may not be able to help you. So you have to have more spectral channels to separate the surface from the dust. Uh, if you're talking about in general aerosols, uh, most often we use RGVs to do that, but we also need other channels uh, like thermal channels, IR channels, or um, near IR channels to make correction for other atmospheric components such as gases, uh, relay scatterings, um, and surface reflectance. Currently, we have PQ200 ambient particulate matter sampler with the data of hours, days, and weeks in point of the city. The most affected by vacuolar fleet when interpolating this data, I would like to adjust them with the data of MODIS. For what method could you recommend me? <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'm not familiar with this uh, specific sampler, PQ200 ambient, but if you have, PM data over uh, one station, and if you want to uh, 
calibrate modis uh, one kilometer or 10 kilometer aerosol products you can do some statistical modeling uh, if you are only interested at local level and not uh, so your statistical modeling may provide good results at local station but it also depends on many other factors how much variability is there uh, within the city limits and how and what kind of topography you have what kind of surfaces you have uh, is the city is vegetated enough uh, so there are a lot of factors which goes into play uh, you will have to do some statistical modeling uh, in order to uh, understand um, the quality which you can get from the satellite Is there any initiative to have some similar satellite program like AHI on the Caribbean? Uh, the Caribbeans are covered by uh, US satellites, GOES-R and GOES-S, uh, and you should be able to get uh, the data freely over Caribbean from both of these satelli uh, satellites. Uh, they have a similar quality as AHI, Mm, but over America and Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. Okay, another question. For the air quality management angle, is there any existing projects or effort in progress where a remote sensing air emission is directly used in models to determine the impact of sensi sensible area or population and be adopted to other region. Is that something feasible for government agencies in countries in developing uh, right now? There are several efforts where actually satellite based uh, emission database have been derived and they are uh, agencies like uh, NOAA, EPA, NASA does use them into model uh, to class uh, to account for emissions from various sources. For example, uh, aerosols emissions or trash gas emissions from the fires uh, uh, have been developed using based on the fire detection from the satellites. Uh, dust emission factors all over the globe have been derived uh, using satellite data again uh, and been used by various modeling groups uh, all around the world. Uh, NO2 emissions and SO2 emissions have been also derived using the satellite data and uh, various agencies have been using them. Uh, currently, a <clears throat> lot of these efforts have been uh, at the research scale. Um, not many agencies uh, have adopted them in an operational sense. Uh, some of them have done it in operational sense. Uh, but there is still uh, room for evaluation and making understanding uh, much uh, uh, understanding the satellite data, how it can be used for regulatory purposes. People are using it for monitoring purposes, but not for regulatory purposes. Is there going to be an assignment for the webinar series? No, we will not have an assignment for this webinar series. Okay, uh, question number 13. I have always had problem with the recovery of aerosols because the city throughout the year is quite cloudy as I get few data of aerosol optical depth, what could I do? Uh, unfortunately, uh, no one can do anything if your city is con consistent, um, if your city is consistently cloudy because uh, most of the 
that also optical depth data which we gathered is using uh, visible channels or optical uh, channels and if there are clouds uh, then we cannot penetrate uh, those to see through the clouds you can use some lidar data like calypso satellite uh, which can penetrate cloud up to some extent depending on the thickness of the cloud and optical properties and that can provide some data but it's very very limited question number 14 how can the remote sensing data be used in forming government policies regarding source specific mitigation hmm. I am I'm not familiar exactly actually uh, how how you can use them uh, but I will give you some example where uh, uh, various government agencies have been using uh, the remote sensing data for example uh, US EPA uh, and state agencies use satellite data uh, for to submit uh, a uh, uh, exceptional event uh, case studies where certain states uh, uh, can actually use the satellite remote sensing data and show that the pollution which has been affected their uh, particular state or city has been not originated in that state and coming from transporting from another state or another uh, or from uh, source far away from that state now that's one where people have used that uh, also based on uh, long-term data available from the satellite um, in places where we do not have any ground measurement um, we can perform a, a long-term trend analysis and see and identify hot spots, spots in specific countries or region where air quality has been degrading or improving and that can uh, be used as source of information while forming the policies. Uh, there are other ways in which people have been using the data uh, for uh, specific policies uh, uh, to put in place. OK, uh, I think. Uh, we have answered all the questions. If you have more questions, feel free to email us and we will be able to, uh, we will post this question answer transcripts on website. And next week, uh, we will have a uh, speaker from uh, India, um, ISRO India and uh, Dr. Prakash Chohan. He will be talking about the uh, data and some of the capabilities from the Indian uh, uh, Indian series of uh, GST satellite called INSET and uh, we will see how to access those data and some of the details of those measurements uh, by the uh, until then uh, have good night good day um, and see you next week